Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be taking a very quick look at Van Gogh and his landscapes. So I particularly like his landscapes and I thought it would be nice to do something similar or give it a try at least. And I'm just doing it on a mixed media pad and I'm going to be using the Derwent Art Bars. For those of you who are new to my channel, if you'd like to subscribe for some more tutorials and demonstrations like this, I do them twice weekly on a Monday and a Thursday and we do them in a variety of media. So sometimes watercolours, oils, acrylics and drawing etc. So lots of different things um, twice a week. So, but today we're going to be looking at the art bars. So I bought these a little while ago. And I did do a review of them and if you didn't see that I'll put the link up here. But some lovely colours in them and they're water soluble as well so you can use them in different ways. So this was the set of, let me have a think, this is a set of 24. And you can, like I say, there's some lovely colours in those. And But I thought for this little project they're nice and uh, vibrant but also quite immediate. We'll be able to get a lot of colour down quite quickly. So the thing I really like about... Um, the landscapes, I'll just show you this little sheet here, this is something I was doing with the ladies that come to my class here this morning, is this way, this perspective, because it's very simple, so it's very easy for us all to do, we use very simple perspective, here we've got very simple one point perspective with everything going towards the sky there, to this central point, similarly here, we've got very small um, skies in a lot of these with a lot of foreground which really gives you that sense of being in that field and very strong lines drawing your eye into the distance so we've got a big feeling of uh, having a big space and getting that distance in which is what I like and he uses a lot of broken lines so if we look in here at his drawing first of all uh, and, he draw and he paints in the same fashion that he draws this, this was actually let me just think it's done in black chalk, uh, so it's presumably similar to charcoal. Lots of little broken lines, but all going in one direction into the distance there. Um, but then again, we've got some nice curved lines added into that to give us that contrast and break it up a little and make it more interesting. But again, very little sky with a lot of foreground. And I'll just have a look at one or two. And at this one, you can see more clearly and we've got these very very strong lines some nice curves there and then lots of little strokes here where you can clearly see the paint and the brush marks so this was done in oil and obviously we're not going to be working as thickly as that but we're going to try and get those similar shapes in some nice lots of nice curves lots of little short lines um, lots of contrast but also thinking about the colours because he put very strong colours together in this field here you can see we've got a, quite a bit of violet against the yellow so looking at things that contrast nicely together red and green just to make those really vibrant paintings with lots of interest lots of detail so I'll just pop those to one side and we'll the photograph that I've chosen to do is one that I found on Pixabay now I did find quite a few when I was looking, so that if you want to do something similar, there's loads of nice pictures of fields. If you just put in something like wheat field or poppy field, you'll get some lovely images off Pix Pixabay with these nice strong lines. So this one is a particularly good photograph because the, it's completely central where we have the fo focal point with all the lines going towards it, this one point perspective that's very simple to do. A very small piece of sky and just some trees behind, so not much detail there at all. So I'll just pop that to one side, or put it in front of me, should I say, and we'll just, with a pencil, make some very simple drawing. So we're not going to be doing lots of detail with a pencil, we're just putting one or two lines in to get us started. So the bale, actually, the central bale comes up above the horizon slightly. I'll show you that there you can see the trees behind it and then some of these other bales are set out against the trees so they're showing up against the darker colour of the trees. So I'll put leave that one on there and then I'll put a bit of a line of some trees and it might be quite nice just to start the trees a bit taller at their sides and bring them down. These are some deciduous trees, it might be nice here and there to put some more spiky trees in and just for vary that as we go along but we can do that with the paint once we get going and then we want to start and build up these lines so put the two main lines in there 
to begin with and then just one or two indicators of where these lines are going and that's enough pencil drawing really so I'll pop the pencil to one side and I'm just going to do the whole thing with one brush so this is a round brush it's a synthetic one I was looking for a number on there but there isn't one it's probably around a number six I should say and I'll start at the top with the sky so I'm using this um, art bar straight from the bar at the moment with the brush but I will pick them up in a moment and use them for drawing as well so this is a great thing both with art bars and with um, the ink tents is that you can use them both for drawing and painting at the same time so this is a very pale blue that I'm beginning with which is a rather pretty colour for the sky underneath those clouds like I say I'm going to do this quite quickly you'll have a lot more time to perhaps do a much larger painting quite creamy the art bars they go on really nicely and blend in really well where that water's, where that paint's still wet there you can add some extra colour in and get a bit of variety Okay, so if you see that's that thin strip we've got there, then above there we need these lovely clouds. So we're going to need some darker colours for here and um, some perhaps some darker blues and some greys. A lot of variety in there and get some of these lines in for the swirls. So now I'm going to have to try and work like I'm not used to working more in lines in the sky. Normally if I was doing a sky I would be blending it but I'm going to try and just in a way draw it. So let's get some different blues. Oops, that's not blue is it? I've picked up a very purpley colour there. I looked at that, I'll just show you. I was thinking that was the blue but it's that's that's a darker blue. I've actually got it turned over so I can't read the colour. If it says the colour on it's probably got iris yes yeah, so we should have known that was a more purpley blue but actually I quite like it it's quite a nice colour so we'll just blend that in a bit more into that other blue to get that line where it's a little bit darker and we'll use a bit more of that we'll use it all the way across and I'm still painting aren't I I'm trying to Think about getting some more of these swirls and lines in that, that uh, Van Gogh would have used. Very, very swirly clouds. And lots of lines. And this is all going to take time to build up. So I'll just use a few different blues and a different, few different greys and darks and carry on building up these shapes and then I'll perhaps come back to you in a few moments when I've built that up a little bit
Okay, I'm going to leave this guy for now, but I'll possibly come back to it once that's dried off a little bit. Um, this would be much easier, I think, if we were doing it on a bigger scale. It's quite difficult doing it quite so small and getting um, all these lines in and getting a spontaneous feel to it, really. I think I've perhaps made that a little bit too tight. But you can see where I was coming from. I've used lots of different colours. Tried to get the, the darks underneath the bottom of the clouds there and I've used some lighter colours in the clouds themselves and then this lovely colour underneath these turquoisey blues that are underneath. And now I'll move on to the trees. But like I said, I'll have to leave one or two little chinks of light on the trees for these um, bales that we've got. So for the trees, um, we've got a lovely colour here. Let me just have a look what it's called. Green Earth. Uh, and that's a super colour. So I think actually what I'll do is I'll draw them in first of all. So like I said, this is a great thing about these um, art bars is that you can use them both for drawing and for painting. So if you want to do a little bit of work uh, and get some colour down quite quickly, you could just pick them up and draw with them. And these are a long way in the distance, so we don't need any detail in these trees. There are one or two poking up from behind this bale. So just making some shapes really, getting a bit of colour on the paper. And let's see what other greens. So we've got this one here. Now let me see what it's called. Prairie. It's not really a green, it's like a a browny green, if that's a good description, I'm not sure. We'll pop a bit of that. Sage, sage is probably quite a good way to um, describe it. But these need to be quite dark in tone compared to the um, the background of the sky. So we want these to be have plenty of colour. So press on and get plenty of colour off those bars before we go and put some water in perhaps to blend them. So you could blend them with your fingers, you could leave them like that as well if you wanted to. And I'll just use some of the umber at the bottom to get a dark, nice dark line in at the base where that's going to have a heavy shadow. And then I'll just use a touch of water on my brush to blend a little bit of these colours together and make some tree shapes. So there's all sorts of ways in which you can use these art bars. They're quite nice just use dry without any water um, and blending them with your fingers and blending the colours on top of each other. The lighter colours on top of the darker colours make some lovely effects. Like I say, one or two taller trees might come back and put a bit of blue into some of those, get a bit of variety. At the moment they're looking a bit boring. And now that that paper's wet and we come back and just add some extra colour with the art bars, they sort of almost melt into the paper and become very easy to use. So I want a nice dark colour now for the base. So burnt umber and you'll see what I mean as you put them in they blend nicely into the colours that are already there because they're wet and you can get a lot of pigment off quite quickly and get build up those tones And that's made it slightly richer already. A bit more of that green that we began with. If you use the corners you can get more shape, a bit more form. Especially when the paper's dry you can sort of draw with them a bit better with using the corner of the bar. But it does stop you getting too tight with your drawing as well when you're using something as blunt an instrument as this really. You can see by building it up like that, both drawing and blending it with the water, that we're soon getting a very dark line 
compared to the sky because we do need that to be much darker can you see there than the the other th areas of the painting so i want to mix some blue into that as well one of the blues that we used in the sky just in places some of these taller trees as well cypresses are a very blue green aren't they don't do the same shapes all the way along vary the way that you're moving your hand vary the shapes you're making so that it's not too uniform and I think we'll come in with some of that yellow as well I don't know if you saw I put a tiny bit in the sky as if we had a little chink of light coming down there um, and you see these bits that have come off they're really nice to sort of blend into other areas of your painting so that tiny little tiny little bit there pick up with my finger and see how much colour you can get off it so you can start and build up some of these lines that we've got in the foreground with those and then we'll come and work on top of them again afterwards so it looks a little bit muddy that's all where the other colours have mixed with it but that's all going to add to it later so we'll just put a few chinks of light on the top of some of these trees but without getting rid of all that nice sky that we've got there behind there they're very sticky can you see what a, me a mess it makes when you've used them wet and then you use them picking them up you get very messy fingers but you can use that I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up but when you blend them like this with your finger the more you do it the shinier they get you get a lovely lovely finish to them now I'm sure some of you will have noticed that I said I was going to leave some little chinks of light for those bales the ones that are showing against the trees and I haven't done and one way you can lift off the um, art bars is by using something like a shaping tool this one's actually on the end of one of these tacklon brushes they come with this nice end on um, and you can just lift little chinks of light out in places for those bales and again where you stra scrape off the colour you get that little end bit of colour left and you can use that somewhere else if you really needed to if you wanted to so can you see how the colours underneath are showing up so we're not going back to the white paper we're going back to that green that we put underneath to begin with and that gives quite a nice effect again do these quite randomly don't do them all spaced exactly the same some closer together and some further apart but that works just to get those bales in the distance hoping it shows up to you it might not do from that angle um, and I think I still want to go darker with some of those areas so we'll get the let me think some more blue and just with the corner do a little bit of drawing in between maybe some lines on top of where you've already got your trees so they really are great fun these because you can just keep building them up and then scraping them back where you've gone wrong as well or where, or where you want to just get, get a little bit of light back not necessarily where you've gone wrong but maybe you want to get some light recapture it I don't know if you can see now how I'm drawing with these but you just use the very corner of it to get some finer lines and a bit more detail some swirls of those cypress trees going up because like I said they're quite um, blue aren't they really And then maybe a chink of light again on top of one or two drawing and again can you see how that's come off in quite a chunk and if you lift that up you can put that somewhere else this is a lovely color um, I'll just show you ah, it's not written on 
it'll be written on somewhere <laughs> I did write these all down the colours when I first got them but the, the labels have come off but yeah it's like a creamy colour and it's really useful for putting back on top of dark colours okay so I'm wittering on a bit we'll go to um, the field now and start building up these lines now this is going to take me quite a while so I'll probably come back to you and speed this little bit up and have a real good think about the colours because it's very um, very orangey red which is going to like make the contrast between the land and the sky really nice so this is quite these two are quite orangey in the colours and they're actually quite um, go quite well with those but we'll use some brighter yellows in there as well and maybe even some red make it nice and bright and cheerful
as you can see I got completely carried away there with the process I didn't wasn't really concentrating on where I was going with it I was just really having fun using these art bars so you can see I use them in a lot of different ways I use them some with the brush um, and some water just using them straight from the art bar and painting with them some putting them on as using them as a crayon and some after I've put them on wetting them as well and blending them as you can see by the state of my fingers with my fingers so I'm still getting to know these art bars I haven't used them that much getting to know the colors and things um, I did get a little bit carried away I've ended up with a, it looking a bit messy but I think I've got quite a lot of energy in it and it's it's you know it's all certainly going towards this central bale we've got those lines going um, in that direction so I've used lots of different lines I've got some uprights some going across where the, the wheat or whatever it is has fallen over um, so you could actually if you're doing it on a bigger scale you could get a lot more form in than I've got um, but actually I think it's nice to keep it quite free and just have fun applying the materials um, on here it's a lot more it's a lot darker altogether um, the tones completely different colors if you look at that I think I've made it a little bit sunnier using more yellows could have like I said put some red in there but I thought if I added red now after I'd used those more muted um, earth tones it might look a bit too much we've already got plenty of color in the sky I did bring one or two of the colors out of the sky down into the bottom here so we've got these lovely um, it's called spearmint that one and this lovely pale blue which I've used in the sky here and down here as well and again just blending those in a little bit with my finger like I said they go lovely and uh, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up but when you blend a lot with your finger they get they come shinier and shinier and you can get some really nice effects a completely different effect to uh, the ink tents or anything like that okay so if you've got the art bars and you want to um, have a go with them I can recommend them they're um, a lot of fun very messy but a lot of fun and they work well on this mixed media paper so um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you um, like I said I just wanted to get that feel I'll just get this um, little piece of paper that feel for the perspective you know and, think, and plenty of colour um, and getting things going away from us into the distance there by just using that little strip of sky at the top and lots and lots of foreground so you could have a go at it in acrylic Van Gogh himself worked in oil and you could really see his brush strokes so you use them quite thick and quite in pasto so you could either do it with oil or acrylic and get a similar effect but you could do it in using pens, inks, anything you wanted really but just use this same method of working in little strokes, in lines, lots of curves, lots of straight lines and mixing them all up so we've got lots of contrast but then just keeping this perspective all going into one point and having the sky a lot less than the foreground this is a particularly nice one here we've got a shadow coming across and another thing that's quite characteristic is this very big sun with a game with the lines around it surrounding the sun okay so have fun with that if you have a go and let me know how you get on in the comments below I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did I've just like I said I've not done any painting for a few days I've been off work so it was nice to get back into it with just playing with the materials and having some fun. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye for now.